Um, welcome everybody to another episode of The Link Project and today we have a beautiful naturopath Serena and she is based in Sydney. She also does Zoom consultations for anyone in the world who is interested in her services but we are just here um, excited to talk to her about all things about natural natural medicine and her view on things which is very interesting um and i wanted to kind of start off with a question of how did you even find natural therapies and what kind of made you choose this path um hi everyone thank you for having me by the way uh, it's really exciting um how do i find it i am well, I don't really know. Um, so I kind of grew up around natural medicine and I've been interesting and fascinating about it since I was a kid. Um, I used to go around in this little herbal shop back in Italy and, and thinking, oh my God, this is so cool. Just mixing herbs around it and the smell. And uh, I used to love drinking tea. Uh, my mom used to give me um, homeopathy since I was a kid, so treat me with every sort of little pills. Um, so I think that that's it's always been in my blood. Um, and then I, when I moved to Sydney after a few years, I went to an opening day um, at Natural Care College in North Sydney, and I, have a, I attend to a, le to a lecture. Um, of herbal medicine and I decide after like 20 minutes that's what I want to do so yeah I became a herbalist first um, and then I keep going and I became a naturopath and now I'm currently studying nutrition which is it's included on the naturopathic um, degree but it's a little bit more specific so it's a bachelor in nutrition um, so yeah this is the whole story <laughs> That's a very concise <laughs> explanation. I love that. And I love that you said that after 20 minutes of a lecture, you already knew something you wanted to do. Like, that's amazing. I'm just going to pass it on to my colleague, Mridula, and she's going to ask you the next question. Yeah, no, thanks so much for sharing. And I'm so curious to know, what is uh, your area of, of specialization within herbal medicine, if there is a specialization? And and why um, did you decide, and why did you decide to deepen your uh, sort of your knowledge in that area as well? Uh, yeah, so it's not really an area of specialization in herbal medicine, but as a naturopath, um, I focus mostly, and my bigger passion is um, mental health. So that, that's what's my bigger things, my big area of interest. Um, I'm, I'm growing more and more an interest on nutrigenomic, which is nutrition related to um, genetic. And so, yeah, that's my bigger, I would say, passion and my area of specialization. I, of course, like I'm dealing with a lot of other things, including gut health and hormonal. Most of them are related to mental health anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is it. Why did I get there? Mostly for my personal experience. I used to suffer from anxiety and um, mild depression for a long time. Um, and I didn't know why. I was like, I was doing everything right. And um, um, I changed my lifestyle, I changed my diet, but there was something that was missing. and. Um, and then when I discovered that I have a, um, a, a genetic mutation, um, which is a really long thing to explain, uh, but it's called um, MTHFR, and it's well, it's included on a methylation pathway, so it's a pathway in the body that helps. It's including a lot of different functions in the body, including detoxification and neurotransmitter production, and that was probably one of the big issues that I had. So while I discovered that, I started treating it and my mental health as well, my personal health improved dramatically. So that's why I decided to focus on that and help people like me that were there and thinking, what's going on with me? Um, why? So yeah, that's 
a little brief of my story, I guess. Um, yeah, thanks, Serena. That's amazing. I, I guess we learned so much from our own experience, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's amazing how you actually work through your own experience and then you tried all this natural way of healing yourself. Uh, especially on the mental health side of things. We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit, but I was, uh, I've always been curious, you know, I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm really fascinated myself, you know, uh, about natural medicines and I'm actually getting into that now slowly as well. Um, I know like my, my, my mom, she always like, you know, traditionally, she always gives us like all those traditional natural sort of medicines, right? So, uh, but never, never been into it. It's like, just coming from moms okay yeah but now I think yeah same with myself as well because seeing my family especially my sister and and even going through my own health issues you know I'm trying out all these different things so I was just curious to know how do you find a balance between these natural medicines over traditional medicines you know and when do you think people um, should consider you know natural way of healing over the you know the traditional way so just curious um what's your opinion on that um um everyone should consider both of them i'm not saying that i'm against um traditional uh, like western medicine um i'm just saying that the way we treat people is completely different so i'm um, 100 percent respect the job that doctors and surgeons and medical practitioners that do um but sometimes they're not it's really a fine line like you need both you need to support your body naturally um but also you need medicine if you if it's necessary the problem with society then what they want they want a quick fix so why that's why they approach a medical practitioner because they want a quick fix unfortunately most of the time the the society now and the the current medical situation um they just treat you they, they give you a patch so it's like mostly they fix the problem that you currently have without trying to understand what's the cause of it and that's what we usually do mm -hmm. that's what we're doing so a difference between a medical practitioner and what well, a naturopath um, is that we actually treating the whole body. We we treat it holistically. So we're looking into the whole person between like that could, that could be mentally, um, emotionally, physical. Um, and obviously, like you can have a date, but that date could possibly come from different like different reason um so i don't know if i answer to your question in that way but yeah um that's pretty much the difference between us um we say so i'm not saying that people should not go to the doctor and taking drugs if it's necessary but yeah it they probably need to look into try to understand why they have their symptoms first and treat yeah. the cause of them yeah, completely. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, you you did. But uh, while we're on the topic of this, I would just try just get, you know a bit more curious on to. I understand. I know like exactly what you said. You know, um, um, traditional medicine is like a quick fix. You know, it's a fix. But mm -hmm. whereas the uh, you know um, natural medicine, they take time. But often, what I find, and especially like coming from my own experience as well, is like you know you try to like the balance. You know, how do you find the balance, especially when you're trying out you know a natural medicine over a traditional for example and you're not seeing the result you know right away and but like you still like say you're in pain you know whatever the issue is for example and your body needs something like a quick fix kind of thing and you don't get that from the natural medicine you know what I mean um what what sort of advice do you give those Give, give to those patients, you know, that come to you um, uh, seeking help, you know, in a, in a natural no, way over. of healing, yeah. It all depends what they're coming to see me for. 
Um, if the, the, the pain, for instance, uh, is my leg is hurting and I really need to go to work and walk, huh? um, and I'm in constant pain, huh? and you want to take Panadol, that's fine to me. Obviously, let's try to understand why that leg hurts and treat the inflammation around it because the yeah. Panadol will not reduce the, like we reduce the inflammation, but temp inflammation, but temporarily. It does make sense. Yes, um, yes. Got it. It, it all depends on what they're coming to see me for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, like a lot of people overdue with medication. That's a problem on society. But I yes. know so many people that, well, that's just an example. They go for a night out and then they take in two panadol before going to bed for preventing their day the day after. And I was like, just have two glasses of water. They will probably do the same. Like that's it's so it's right. A, oh my god, yeah. That's so what, true. Yeah. Well, the balance is not there. So a lot of people that approach us yeah. uh, is not just because they want natural medicine, but mostly because that quick fix doesn't work long term anymore because the body yeah. get used to that two panadol, and they need to take four a day. They're not two, and then they get sick about it, and then the body start to react to that. Yeah. So uh, usually that will happen. It's when people try to oof, they start to understand that medicine in that way is probably not working as well as natural medicine. Like the quick fix, it's not working in long term. Same with antibiotics. A lot of bacteria at the moment are resistant to antibiotics, but they're not resistant to herbal medicine. So it's it's that it's the overdue that unfortunately um create that difference between us yeah so i think that's when the patient will understand and say oh i should probably yeah limit it not like conventional medicine and move to well to natural therapy which is kind of traditional medicine because it's been around forever yeah no i yeah thank you that 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 explains absolutely. And I love that example that you gave um, Panadol over water, for example, you know, so that is, that is so true. I mean, I find that as well, you know, sometimes I get headache and I notice that oh, because I didn't drink enough water, for example, and instead of just right. going straight, in, straight to Panadol, like just, I guess, yeah. understand your body, right? And then just go, all right, do I actually really need it? Or or can I actually suppress it, you know, by drinking more water, for example? I guess it's really understanding your body. So yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and also oh. our job is, it's, it's, I mean, that like we try to educate people to listen to the body, to follow a diet or a lifestyle that will help to actually be like to help the body to heal himself because that's what the body does. We got like the body is a really smart machine and. He's got the ability um, to heal himself. So we just need yeah. to address that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I'll pass it on to Brooke. <laughs> you know, I can, no yeah, I, it's, I think everything that you're saying is totally, completely resonates with me deeply because I've been through a lot of illnesses and I haven't taken the medicine for it. I've kind of gone the natural way a little bit more at times not as deeply as a naturopath would advise, but definitely a lot more deeply. Um, out of curiosity, because I know how passionate you are about mental health, and I think, thank you for, I think so many more of us need to be passionate about this topic, because I know when a lot of people come to speak to us, they say, oh, you know, I went to the doctor for my mental health, and they you know, prescribed me some antidepressants, um, out of which is just like lolly water, I think. And you kind of likened that when you said you can have two glasses of water as opposed to having two Panadol after that night out. Out of curiosity, how do you, what are some of the experiences you have with um, clients when they come to see you about mental health concerns? What sort of topics are they bringing to you? Oh, mostly... Um, it's all about anxiety. I'm dealing with a lot of people with anxiety, uh, low motivation, depression, uh, um, and food disorder, like eating disorder or things like that, um, that I consider a mental health issue. Um, 
And so that's what usually they come to me. Um, and that's the concern that they have when they came to me. Most of them, they've been to the doctor and most of them they've been prescribed with antidepressant. Some of those been taking it, some of those haven't, but um, most of them. I, I got that experience myself. I just go to the doctor and say, I'm tired. Here you go, take some antidepressant. I don't know what I'm antidepressant for. I'm just tired. And so unfortunately, this is something that it's really common mm -hmm. in, in my practice. And with a lot of people that I'm talking around with, uh, just they, they give away antidepressant and candy. And I'm 100% not agree about it yeah right and no. out of curiosity how do you treat um some of these clients with natural therapies what is some advice you would give some of these people or clients well it's it's a little bit you're not really giving a, a, the same advice to all of them yeah because they're all um, different yeah yeah they're all different what do you yeah. try to understand hopefully like obviously you need to see if they're under antidepressants or not because we can't give herbal medicine that might be interfere with that mm -hmm. um it depends i'm really to try to understand what's the neurotransmitters that it's actually imbalanced there so even talking to them and try to understand if it's the mood that is down, it's the motivation that is done. So consequently, the mood, because if you're not waking up in the morning and you're not getting out, your dopamine is low, consequently, your serotonin is going to get low. Um, so try to understand what's going on with them and healing and help them healing and change their life and mostly focus on the body system that they need to get healed from. Like it's not necessarily like people with mental health, like let's say the mental wellness, it could be related to a lot of different other factors. Um, gut health is one of those. Hormonal imbalance is another one. Brain inflammation, body inflammation. Um, if someone comes to see me with anxiety and they might have zinc and copper imbalance, which is, really common in people you need to address that so hair mineral analysis as a test that could possibly help with that so i guess that as i mentioned before usually consultation with a naturopath lasts for like an hour an hour and a half you go through everything so our job is actually analyzing the case study that is in front of you which is a patient and try to understand the better way to address it and what you need to focus on um, so even in my case, my mental health wasn't related to a trauma, which is definitely there would be a trauma there. All of us got a trauma, but supporting the physical aspect, it's really, really important. The anxiety could possibly come for inflammation, toxin, um, microbiome imbalance could possibly come from a lot of things. But obviously, if you're not looking after that and long term, we create more mental trauma than everything else if it does make sense it does so yeah i think that my approach is really personal um it's really specific to what's the patient in front of me mm -hmm. you were actually uh the person that i came to first after i went to a couple of doctors years ago i don't know if you remember or not but um yeah i remember i used to go i used to be a school still yeah days. i was um basically uh, the, just what you just were talking about how mental health is very connected to other areas of your life and you, you can have gut issues which was my case which I didn't know mm -hmm. why it was a case where did it start why my mood was like this and it was all connected to gut health which doctors were prescribing antibiotics for me and that wasn't even the case. And what helped me was natural medicine and herbs. And I healed my gut and then my mood and everything went up and I felt like myself again and my life was normal and good. So I totally like resonate with everything that you're saying. Absolutely. Um, one question I wanted to ask you, um, what are some of the shifts that you've seen since the, you know, the lockdowns and the pandemic began and we're still kind of, in it sort of uh in regards to how people feel and think about their mental health 
I, that's a really good question. I actually see two different, like people taking two different paths. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that decide to change their life on a better, and a lot of people that, that just went down. Mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of people that are kind of like having an awakeness out of the COVID lockdown, and they just understand that their life is more important than everything else. Um, and then I saw people that are self-isolating even more. Um, so a lot of people that even now, they're not ready to get out of like in the world. Like I got a lot of people that I know um, and a lot of people that I've been dealing with um, that are still having been how, just having a coffee sit down, like just not coming back to normal life yet. Uh, so, yeah, I think that this pandemic has been a really, it's, it's been a challenge for all of us, like all of us, uh, and especially in Australia, I noticed the fact that we're here and a lot of us are from overseas. Uh, um, it's really been hard on us uh, and on all of the people around here. Um, I'm actually living in Bondi and I noticed the difference between Bondi and the other one of the jobs that I do is in Newtown and I see a completely different um, aspect than what the, the pandemic did to people in Bondi and people in the West. Like it's completely different approach that they have. It. Um, so yeah, I noticed that here in this area, it's a little bit more chill and people really understand what's the important in life, uh, while in West, they're a little bit more scared still. Mm. Uh, but yeah. On the, Mental health, yeah, it's been a big impact, mm. big impact for a lot of people. When I'm on that side, there are oh, good, good, good sides. Of when you were just talking about the two different areas and how the the pandemic kind of influenced both of them, what do you think it depended on? Like the lifestyle of people into different areas, the community, like what do you think the factors were there? I think that it's more about the lifestyle than the community. Uh, Cause I think the West has got a bigger community than we do here. Mm. Um, like we're not a bigger community, um, even though we used to, but not anymore. But um, I think that the lifestyle here is completely different. Like the fact that we close to the beach um people get out go for a walk go for a surf go for a swim whatever but that motivation the sunlight things that unfortunately in west they don't have it as much as us um for i don't know which reason but yeah i found a big difference and people here had kind of like eating better and um approach life differently so that's i found that that is a big I, I find it with my clients as well, like if I need to deal with people here, it's easy for me to say to them, go for a walk. But if I see someone in West, uh, just go for a walk, they say to me, oh, yeah, but you know, like it's actually a big difference, I find it. And I see some clients in Italy as well, and I see that, say to them, go and have a walk before work. And they're like, no, I need to wake up an hour before work. Yeah. Like it's just the, like it's literally a lifestyle, yeah. Which is a recommended to anyone. Like, please just go and have a walk. Like, move your body. Mm. But yeah, it's like I find that the lifestyle change a lot. Mm. Thanks for that. In everyone. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 Sorry, I was going to say, only because I'm really curious and I'm going to cut in, I'm sorry, but do you think it could be related to socioeconomics as well? So, because I'm curious to see if it's the same in Melbourne. Like, I'm in Melbourne and I'm thinking, you know, like you said, there is elements like the ocean and things that people can walk in, but do you think it's sometimes related to scarcity mass mindset and just the difference can, is more than this and the pandemic is showing that? So out of curiosity, are your clients always a little different, do you think? Or has that just been through the pandemic? It could possibly be there. It's, it could definitely possibly be um, a socioeconomic factors as well. Um, obviously, 
with the pandemic, a lot of people lost their job. Um, and well, usually people that lost their job, they people that were working in restaurant or, or retail more than a business uh, they work in or a banker. Like obviously social economical factors is definitely play um yeah play a big role there but also i think i mean if you want to consider what it plays on this pandemic and on the mental health then we need to consider community and family and its support and it's a lot of other factors to what concern my opinion towards health and mental health from the physical side i say yeah, definitely the lifestyle will change the mood. Um, and it's not necessary that you need to be high in so like have a, a high socioeconomical um stand. You just it's simple, you don't need money to change your lifestyle. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Great. Um, so yeah, no, I was, uh, so, you know, when you mentioned about the two disparities you've seen in terms of either people taking the pandemic and done something with it, or, or they've gone further into their shell and not just going back on that, what are some of the rituals for, a, for healthy living that you would, you know, either you implement on a daily basis, or you would recommend that people consider um, even those people that probably are finding it a bit more difficult to go out and do the things that the other lot is? Um, well, the first thing, I had just deleted the post on Instagram about it, but just come back to basics, such so as like having healthy food, nutritional food, stay on sunlight, hydrating yourself, move. Um, and sleep. That's the five basic things. Um, for one of the things that I'm always pushing my clients and everyone that I know, obviously, it's establish a routine, especially when you know um, when you're not used to a routine anymore. Uh, a lot of people see working from home. Um, a lot of people just literally work in pajama with the shirts on top. Don't even brush the tooth anymore. Uh, but establish a routine, just walk up, go for a walk, go for a run, have your coffee or your tea, um, prepare, like stop for, for to, to having lunch, have breakfast, have meals, like nutritional meal. But especially with people with mental health or, or like they want to maintain the, the mental wellness, uh, like a routine for me, it's one of the main factors. Um, stick with that. Like find something that makes you feel better and do it. Even and I say to a lot of people that in the beginning must like it could possibly be hard, but when your body or oh, you're going to feel better, that is something that just became part of yourself. Like your brain adjusts really quickly. Your taste buds adjust after five days. So if you cut it off sugar and for five days, you know, having sugar, for instance. Uh, that five, like after five day, and you're having a, a coffee with sugar or a piece of cake, that's that that actually tastes too sweet for you. So you don't want to go back there. Yes. So that's what I try to teach people and push people to say, let's try. Just wake up 30 minutes before and go for just do some stretching. Um, or reduce your coffee and a, a water with lemon in the morning as the first thing like these little things uh, and stick with that because it's really important in the beginning it's hard but then it's really important to maintaining a routine that's probably what one of my big recommendation well thank you thanks Irana that's awesome yeah I could relate to that a lot and and I think um, all of us being life coaches here um we work with, uh, I think, uh, clients, you know, who uh, struggle yeah. with maintaining those routine, right? And and um, from what I know, I think all of us have actually worked through through our own journey, worked on our own routine as well, just building and maintaining. So I could, re yeah, really resonate with that. You know, it's really important to actually not just building a routine, but maintaining it, right? So, um, but yeah, and yeah, like you said, the coffee, I, I didn't, 
like eat sugar now yeah you're right like now if, even if I put a little bit of sugar it, it's just too too much for me you know so yeah, yeah that's yeah absolutely so I think I just want to so I think the, the topic of mental health we could just go on and on right <laughs> there's just so much to ask I'm just curious I know like um you know with mental health I just want to really I'm more curious and obviously with yourself like working with a lot of clients dealing with mental health issues right what I find is often um people like even if like they are going through mental health issues like for example depression right they don't really um how do they know what is the trigger for them to really know that they they're suffering they, they're going through that mental health issue like the depression you know because what I find is a lot of them don't no. What's that? No, they, a lot of them, they, they don't really yeah. come to me to say, oh, I got depression. So it's really hard. Yeah. Um, it's usually they come for other reason. And then they know most of the people that they got, that's got depression. I'm not, I'm not dealing with clinical depression, like with people that really need antidepressant to keep going. Yeah? But they mood swing, mood disorder, let's call it mood disorder more than the depression. A lot of people, they got mood disorder, they got other issues. That's I never see someone come to me and say, oh, I got mood disorder and that's somebody, everything else is fine. A lot of people has got mood disorder and anxiety. Um, a lot of people got hormonal issue and mood disorder. Um, so what it triggered them could possibly be a thousand different things. Um, it's it's see how severe is the situation no? and try to address that, that it's the difficult part and the challenging part. Yeah. Um, there's not many, like it's hard to, for people with mental health issues to go and see someone. Yeah. It's yeah. probably experience that yourself. It's really hard. Um, yeah. They need to trust you. They need to 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 understand what's going on. And then a lot of people has, have no idea that a naturopath can actually help with that. Yeah, no, uh, that that's right. So it, that's um, it's really challenging there. And then when they come to see you, it's really challenging to like it's you need to do a step by step. You can't. To mm. say, okay, here we go. Like it's a long process. So a lot of them, I found that some of those they quit after the first one. That they come back after two or three months. So yeah, it's hard. people that stick with you, it's people with anxiety. Um, and I found it on myself. Natural medicine helps really quick with anxiety, better than medication sometimes. Um, with depression is a long. Like with mood disorder, it's a really long yeah. journey. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, I agree. Um, I would just, no, no, sorry. Sorry, ladies. I just want to, just getting more curious and curious here. <laughs> just just in that, um, when you said, um, yeah, no, I, I agree, right? Like, think, um, you know, uh, you, what I wanted to also just understand is that sometimes, um, like, like I, I don't know, I don't know what you, from your experience, how do you feel? Like, I think people, I feel that sometimes people, they don't want to admit that they have like problems, for example. Like, I mean, that was, I mean, again, speaking from my own experience as well, you might think that, oh, this is normal, you know, I don't need help. It's like, you know, how do you, I don't know. I mean, of I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I feel it's it's again just from what I what I'm seeing is that I feel that natural um, medicines or I think people are seeking the the natural therapies or more and more now I don't know so I just wanted to hear from you what's your experience it has been like in that right do you do you find that people are actually seeking more help in natural therapies now than yes than before yes yeah um Yes, mostly not just mental health, but in a lot of other things. Um, conventional medicine can help 
or the kind of an answer from conventional medicine. Like, I got a lot of people that they go there with some sort of, like a lot of patients that I've been dealing with that um, unfortunately, mm, conventional medicine could, help, could not help. Um, so they come to see us, to see me or to see my colleagues. So anyone else for getting better answers to try to understand what's going on with them. Um, yeah, a lot of people, especially related to gut or hormones, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, a lot of people that find it difficult to get pregnant. Um, a lot of people come to see us for many, many reasons. So they unfortunately conventional medicine can help or can give you just a fix, like pills for your hormones is not an answer. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I find that a lot of people are more aware of what's going on in their body, which is I'm glad that this is happening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's people like you yourself, you know, uh, uh, just bringing out awareness, really helping people to, um, you know, come out and seek help. So, yeah, thank yeah. you. I think I learned. I think I learned the what a naturopath did when I be when I first went into IVF, and that was over my son's ten. So that was over eleven years ago when they first said, "Okay, well, my IVF specialist was working with my gynecologist, and they were like, well, we think that you know naturopathy would really help in this instance." And it was great. It was it was absolutely fantastic, and I will always praise. I've got my son, he's 10. So I feel like it was all the practitioners working together. So like you said, Western medicine working with um, medicine, with traditional medicine. And that is something that would be so empowering to see going forth. So out of curiosity. Yeah, we all and, all, yeah. yeah. and out of curiosity, we, we, I get this image. You said um, very early on in the piece that you were with your mum in a herbal shop and that's when you fell in love with herbal medicine um what has been one of the biggest things you've learned on your journey i'm learning every day i don't know if i got one bigger things no i think that this is one of the beauty of this job um empathy is probably what i learned the most if i have to be honest with you uh to what concern everything else you just it's a constant learning um it's it's amazing uh like i find it fascinating even read like i got friends that make fun of me about oh what are you reading today because <laughs> hey, like i'm always about to read like something on whatever genetic or brain or fat or protein whatever like i'm always read some sort of uh, it's always a, like a learning this is a learning job you're just learning every day um and I find that amazing. And every day you see your patient and you're thinking, okay, I just learned something new. Like it's really with each person you're learning something new. Um, I would never expect that when I walked, when I was six in a herbal shop and thinking, oh, this is what I'm going to do. No, I would never, never, never thought so. But yeah, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. I love it. I love this job for that. Because um, you can learn for each individual. So, I love yeah. your answer so much. Like, I love when people say that it's, uh, you know, always a journey of learning in any profession. I think that should be a thing, but I can see how much you love what you do and how much you care for your clients. And like you said, empathy mm -hmm. is something that, you know, you've learned to have even more of in your life, working with your patients. And that's amazing. And the fact that you are investing so much in yourself actually tells us that you care so much about your job that your clients are going to be in good hands because you're going to take good care of them which is amazing um but i wanted to know i know brooke asked you like what what, what was your biggest learning kind of uh in in you know in the industry and in a profession but what was the biggest learning about yourself on this journey like since you started naturopathy and since you you know you're still progressing on the journey but just what have you learned about yourself that you didn't know before Oh God, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't. I really don't know. Like I think that the journey's been so long that I learned so many things about myself. Huh? Um, 
I boost my self-confidence, which is I didn't have as much um, on the way. Um, so like, obviously I've been graduate and after graduation, like before became a naturopath, I was so insecure that I have to work on myself for a really long time uh, to be here now. Um, I learn uh, to deal with people in a different way um, that I never learned and I never used to do before. Um, and patient, failure. Um, so dealing with these little things. Um, and yeah, so I think this is my main uh, things. Yeah, like self-confidence, failure, and patient, and empathy. You know, um, if we're all um, kind of setting up our businesses and working towards, you know, our own uh, coaching career. There's something that you said about failure just now. I just wanted to see your take on it. Like, how do you look at failure now? <laughs> you deal with it pretty much every day. When you decide, because then like you study six years of physiology, anatomy, and now you need to study for two more years about what marketing is. <laughs> because obviously, <laughs> and that's a constant failure. <laughs> it's like you need to be a naturopath a designer a marketing planner you need to design your like it's just crazy uh so that's probably my bigger failure <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm failing every day i try to understand how instagram connecting to facebook and then mm-hmm. uh, uh, how to create a website uh no so i think this is probably um when i'm talking about failing uh and obviously even with clients uh, um like sometimes that you've been studying for so many years uh, mm. and you just go there and you're thinking, okay, this is the treatment plan that I want to do. You're failing because probably that's not working uh, and it's not working immediate. Um, and that's where the patient is coming to it. So try to teach your clients that unfortunately this is not working as it's supposed to. And uh, mostly because you can't, that's not a, a settled plan for everyone mm-hmm. uh, let's say this is not really common but let's say that when I started probably happen or when your clients don't come back and you blame yourself and you're thinking what did I do wrong and they might feel much better huh? and then not come back because people don't always go back um, but the first time you're feeling like oh they're not committing enough uh, or they're not ready a lot of people they're not ready for it. like they try they thinking that they are and then they're not coming back because they're not ready for like for this big challenge and then it's a failing for you which is not you just need to embrace the fact that, that people are not ready mm-hmm. and things like that so, i think that advice just spoke to me i'm like yes <laughs> i feel what you're talking about <laughs> no, like, the beginning that was so frustrating uh, and now just i understand why they might not just come back um and i might come back after two months like you never know and they're just gonna reach you and text you and email you and i'm like hi i'm here i'm ready now okay let's try again so i think that is give a little bit of a push on my patient i'm usually really patient in general but i learned to be patient and respect other people's time Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No, sorry. Yeah, you, you go on. Like, no. Okay. Um, yeah, no, this is just such great advice. And I'm sure uh, so many of us hearing this would, uh, you know, think of this. You've tackled it in so many dimensions, going from the fact of believing in yourself uh, when things are not going the way you've kind of thought it would and then believing in yourself despite of that and and also the courage to you know front up your client and say that okay what we tried is not working and we need to redirect I think taking all of that into perspective is something that is so important to keep in mind as each one of us in our different journeys yet similar in some ways go along and um yeah. and hmm. And also to add to that, uh, what I was um, 
the the one question out there might be people that might uh, get inspired listening to what you've just brought on and and how naturopathy has helped so many of us like what brooke has shared what christina has shared as well from their examples what um what would be your advice for someone who wanted to get on the journey to study naturopathy uh wow um I would recommend it to everyone to study naturopathy um, or to if they want to. Obviously, it's a big commitment. Um, and it's a lot of study, but it's worth it. Like I find it every day worth it or what I study. And in every day, I find it incredible what I'm learning and I love it. Um, so I would recommend it to everyone. But probably slowly, start slowly. I start really slowly. I start with a few courses um, as an advanced diploma, herb medicine, and, and then I'm moving forwards and I just keep studying. But yeah, start slowly. Maybe just do a few lectures here and there. Uh, but yeah, I hardly recommend to everyone to get into that. Thank you so much for that. I think we've learned. We've learned a lot and also we were connected to everything that you were saying today because naturopathy helped us all in one way or the other. And I love how you said that um, everyone should learn a little bit more about this because it can keep your, your whole mental and physical health in balance and um, you can holistically heal your body if you look at all the aspects, not just just the mental health or not just the physical health. That it's all we're all complex yeah. human beings, so we need to, you know, look into that. Um, do people do need to be, I think, more aware about what naturopathy can offer and how it can help with different sort of disorders, um, any sort of issues and routine 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 habits 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 for everybody <laughs> lots of sun good food <laughs> exercise yeah <laughs> thank you so much for this conversation i think we'll probably have like a part two soon because i feel like we we have a lot of questions for you um but this was a, an awesome awesome time with you thank you so much for coming thank on. you for having me it's been really nice um ladies any last words thank you all right. I just thank wanted you. to say thank you. Yeah, just thank you, sure. sir. Thank you. Can I be with the group? Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I will enjoy with my like I said, naturopathy has got me my with my with in work with Western medicine. I now have a 10-year-old who's downstairs making a total mess. I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. <Yay. laughs> Oh, All who right. knows? He's probably planning a special surprise for you. Who knows? <laughs> All right, Beauty, we're going to let you go and we will see you again, hopefully very soon. And thank, thank you. you again. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you so much.